It's a celebration tonight. Yeah. 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 Hey everybody, welcome back to the HeroCast once again. I am Impact Dude, and this week I am joined for the second consecutive week by my good buddy FK9. FK9, how you doing, bud? I'm very good. I think I've finally gotten over that cold that kicked my ass the last couple of weeks. And uh, yeah, I was just on last week, but so desperate was I, so desperate was I, to weigh in on the show again this week that we're recording this on the same night that the trailer for The Last Jedi is supposed to drop. Wow. That's how, that's how committed we are. We, we, are, we are definitely committed. We are absolutely committed. Um, folks, plugs as always. Don't uh, forget to check out impactasylum.net, the, uh, ho- the host website for both this show and FK9 show as well. As always, check out FK9. Don't forget to check out our good buddy Robert Does Wrestling. For those of you that don't know, uh, Robert is in Puerto Rico, and he's actually a, a member of the National Guard down there. So Robert's doing some really great things off the air, and uh, mad, mad props to you, buddy. Mad props to you. Don't forget to check out our good friend of the show, Andre Corbeil, as well as the One of a Kind Elite Podcast. And, of course, don't forget to check out our good buddy BQ. we got to get BQ back on the show soon, FK9. I haven't talked to BQ in a while. And uh, don't forget to show out the uh, Wrestling Perspective podcast uh, with Petey Williams. So lots of good impact podcasts out there. Check them all out. Let's be supportive of everybody. So FK9, we don't have quite the amount of news that we had last week, but we do have rumors of a new signing. Uh, supposedly Impact has signed Sammy Callahan. What do you know about Sammy? Uh, they're, they're signing him, or is that is that a rumor, or is that confirmed? Uh, last I heard, it was, it, was, it was a rumor that looked like it was to be confirmed. It looked like it was pretty much a done deal, but it was still, it hadn't been officially shown yet. That's what I, that's what I read. All right, but it's looking, it seems likely that he's on his way. That's what they're saying. It seems like he's very likely on his way. All right. Well, uh, okay. Well, I, you know, Sammy Callahan is a guy that on the Indies that has a bit of a following because it didn't work out with him in NXT for whatever reason. I don't really know what's going on there because I don't watch NXT. But, you know, he is somebody that uh, a lot of my subscribers have uh, been talking about who have wanted to see uh, us bring him in for a while. So that's good. Uh, it does it, – it is a bit of a concern because – this is an issue that we've been having for a couple of months, uh, pretty much since the Anthem regime took over, that they just keep on bringing in new people over and over again. And they haven't really devoted a lot of attention to, you know, making a lot of these guys, you're know, helping them catch on. You know, it's worked with a couple of them, I guess, but it's still just a, a big crowd of people. And a lot of them are having trouble standing out because there are just so many of them and they keep bringing in new people over and over again. And maybe the time has come to kind of scale that back and just focus on the people you have. It might, uh, it's, it's got to be kind of difficult to create new stars when all you're doing is just bringing in more people all the time. It's, 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 it's terribly difficult. And I'll tell you, you know, there's a lot of reasons that people cite when they talk about impact and why the ratings aren't higher. But let's face it, FK9, you invest in talent. You have your favorite wrestlers. And when they constantly go as soon as they get there and somebody new comes in, you don't really invest in the talent anymore. And so really what Impact has left are folks that have actually invested in the brand of Impact, which sadly, thinking about it, they keep changing as well. So when you do that, there's really nothing left to invest in. And so you really just wind up with hardcore wrestling fans and people that want an alternative to WWE. And that's not really a good way to go about doing things. So I'm going to I'm going to second what you're saying about stopping it. What I will say is that they're very clearly uh, making a making it a point to hit 
you know, folks that are more of the independent nature and to try to find fans that, of independent wrestling. And Sammy Callahan is one of those guys that has a big independent following. So, you know, he could be a guy which will, you know, help them bring a few v- viewers in. But he's not going to be a huge needle mover because, I mean, you know, really, who is he? Right? Yeah. So, so, so yeah, exactly. Now, let's talk about impact and let's talk about people that you and I are down with and moving the needle. And, of course, that starts with my sis, Rosemary. <laughs> now, FK9, did you get a chance to listen to her on podcast one? Is that the Lance Storm podcast? That's the Lance Storm podcast. Yeah, uh, I haven't heard it yet. Didn't have a chance. I was working all weekend. I did read a little bit of it, a uh, transcript. So I kind of I got the gist of what she was talking about. I haven't had a chance to listen to it. Anybody that has not checked her out on podcast one, that's Lance Storm's podcast, as FK9 said, go over there, hit it up. Check it out. Rosemary breaks character. Although I, I, I will admit, okay, I did get corrected pretty quickly by uh, Crazy Steve when I tweeted it out that she is is still she's Courtney, okay, and that Courtney is is equally dangerous to Rosemary, okay. But uh, she talks about growing up. She talks about growing up in Canada. She talks about her rugby past. She talks about her theater past. Uh, she talks about everything, and of course, she even gets into the sexy star incident. So, if you if you all want to hear Rosemary as not the Rosemary character, it, check it out. I guarantee you, you will leave a bigger fan of this gal than you started with. Uh, a, a truly, a, a spectacular individual, and it plays itself out on air so well. Uh, came off as as incredibly genuine. It was a really fun listen. <laughs> yeah, and the interviews where she breaks character are pretty rare. I, um, I think I've only seen maybe one where she's done that since she started this whole demon assassin gimmick. Otherwise, she's in kayfabe 24-7. So an interview where she's actually talking as herself, that's a pretty unique thing. Yeah, she does not break kayfabe, like, literally ever, you know. Um, and so for her to break kayfabe, to do a podcast, is 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 super, super rare and it makes it that much better. And I, I'm going to say this to any wrestler out there that may be listening to this podcast. Don't break kayfabe. Don't do it. You want to know why wrestling is down? It's because you go in the ring as a character. You come out and you're yourself. Stay in your character. See how it's working for her? That's how it can work for you too. That gal knows exactly what she's doing. And she's doing a spectacular job of it. And it's really sad that more folks aren't following suit. <clears throat> because back in the day, people would hate the wrestlers. You can listen to some of Jim Cornette's work that he's put out there. Where he talks about, man, he, he, he was held at gunpoint. And everybody wanted to kill him and everything else after shows. Because they actually believed that, you know, that he was doing stuff that, <clears throat> you know, that it wasn't, that it was Big, real. young, good-looking so football players. Don't break kayfabe. Um, but, but FK9... Bound for Glory, it's sold out, right? Mm-hmm. That's real, okay? You can throw kayfabe out on that. That is real. Bound for Glory is sold out. There is not a seat left in the in the building, and that is, I think that's spectacular news. How about you? It is. It's fantastic. You know, I, they, I like that they didn't try to uh, go beyond their means this time, like when uh, Hogan and Bischoff convinced them to take the show on the road and book these huge venues that they had no chance of possibly filling up. This time they they kept their their estimates conservative here. I think it's a it's a smaller venue that they're going to, but it's one that they could realistically fill up. And uh, you know, once they started actually announcing matches, they they sold the place out. Okay, great. Now let's see if you can do that for Impact. Maybe announce some matches for those TV tapings, which I don't believe you've done yet. You know. Uh, but hey, uh, they they sold out Bound for Glory. Great. Uh, now let's uh, you know on to step two. Let's sell out those TV tapings. Yeah, I I, I agree with that. At least the very least, announce the stars that are going to be there. Yeah, I mean they've you got know? enough high profile Canadian talent on the roster that they they could and should be able to draw a crowd. I mean Rosemary the Rosemary by herself could draw a pretty big big crowd in Canada at this point. She's got a big following up there. So there's no reason why they shouldn't be able to get a, a respectable crowd for these TV tapings at least. I mean, I know they're taping these things on a week and weekdays and people got shit to do, but they should be able to get enough people there that they won't embarrass themselves if they play their cards right. I mean, they got Gail Kim. They got Allie. 
you know, I mean, let, let, let's face it. There's there's plenty of Canadian talent out there. Don't forget our good buddy, Petey Williams, right? Taya Valkyrie is Canadian. Taya Valkyrie, right? Yeah. She's from Vancouver, if I'm correct. So, you know, you think about it, half the knockouts are, are already there. You've got Petey Williams. Why not? Why not? Throw the, you know, the strap on Petey Williams in one of those tapings, you know, and Petey Williams is getting a title shot in Canada. Announce it. Right. And then, and then, you know, let's get this thing sold out, but let's make sure that we have activity and let's make sure this crowd's loud. Absolutely. So in other news, uh, Impact did its weekly conference call. And for those of you listening, if you head over to impactasylum.net, Myself and Dot and I's are going to participate in these conference calls. And if you go to the website, you'll be able to type in your question and we'll see if we can't get your question answered during the conference calls. So it's an opportunity to for for our listeners and anybody that's out there to be able to listen in on these conference calls. But James Storm had a conference call this week and, uh, you know, it was a, it was a typical James Storm conference call. He, you know, he, he, he pushed a couple of interesting things, FK9, and you already touched on one of them, and that was Impact tries to have a bunch of stars and doesn't build superstars. They don't have that guy that's going to that's gonna take the company and is going to be the guy of the company. They never actually build that guy. And that was one of the things that, that he said that was kind of critical, and, and I, I couldn't agree with that more. Yeah, definitely. I think that's another uh, byproduct of trying to bring in so many people. You know, they're they're trying to accommodate a whole lot of people and not really focusing on developing, you know, that guy or that girl or you know that the person with that X factor that could be, you know, that could become a household name. I mean, they're, they've got potentially they've got a few people who could do it. EC3, Eli, Drake, they could yeah. be that guy, but it's a matter of really spotlighting and showcasing these people effectively. And that's hard to do when you're trying to, when you're devoting so much time to like, like, like these, this, these triple a people or, or American top team or whatever. And these stories that are just not, a, not properly told or not compelling or, or whatever. And that's down to the writing a lot of the time. But uh, that's why I say that they got to stop focusing on everybody and start focusing on like the, the maybe identify a few core people to build the talent around and really try to build those people into bigger names than they are right now. Yeah. They don't, they don't seem to do a very good job of that and they don't seem to have any clue as to, you know, where to start. And that's the part that gets me because you're talking about wrestling. You're talking about a company that's traditionally, and I know they're moving up to Canada now. So it's James storm. Sorry about your damn luck, buddy. But you know, wrestling Southerner, James storm, they they very easily could have built him into a huge name in the South, right? And they could have taken an EC3. Instead of having him from Broca Raton, they could have had him come from New York City and built him in the North. When they go to the South, Storm is the face and EC3 is the heel and, and flip back and forth. You know, really, Eli Drake, the, the same way they could do this stuff with. But they don't, they don't seem to really try to have these – these fellas identify with certain segments of the crowd. I feel like if they did that, they could do a lot better than just this random stuff. And I know we're going to get into this more in the show later, but there has been a lot of random, you know, bringing people in and booking them. So speaking of booking talent, did you hear about Canuck Pro? No, what happened? So supposedly (laughs) Canuck Pro, they were going to run all these shows And they booked all this talent. They never ran a show. Apparently never intended on running a show. And now all the talent's booked. You know, they got all these open dates. Some of them got their flight plans and everything else. And so the wrestlers have been tweeting all over the internet, you know, stay away from Canuck Pro. It's it's effectively as if you, me, and Raven Effect got together. And we said, here's what we're going to do. We're going to start a wrestling promotion. I mean, not really, but... You know, we're going to tell a talent that we're going to have a show and here's where it's going to be. And and then we're just not going to do it. We're just going to disappear. <laughs> I mean, you want to talk about crappy. And, you know, 
these are these are these are people trying to feed their families. Uh, you know what I'm saying? I mean, like, how do you how do you take money out of families' pockets? Because that's exactly what they're doing when they mess with the talent like this, taking money right out of their pocket. They could have been booked somewhere else. You know, I'm sure a lot of them, you know, are going to lose money on flights and everything else. I mean, just 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 super disgusting. Yeah, I wonder. I wonder what happened there. I I don't know. It just happens. You don't try to start a wrestling promotion and book talent and then just not, then just disappear. That's that's odd. Yeah, and and a lot of them were Ring of Honor talent, and the Ring of Honor talent then had to fly back for a Ring of Honor show, and uh, and they were all getting screwed over really hardcore. So just um, just 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 terrible news for the talent there. Yeah. Now, there is one other bit of news here, which could be good news for the talent, uh, the complete opposite. Uh, FK9, do you remember Aeroluge? <laughs> oh, those guys. Those guys, Ron yeah, I re- Don I re- Harris I re- and, uh, and, and Jason Brown, uh, according to the Wrestling Observer Newsletter, apparently they have put out a casting call, and they want to put together a TV pilot for whatever they're – they're calling it a television show similar to Raw and SmackDown, but with an element of Lucha Libre to it. Okay. It sounds a lot like Lucha Underground, right? Um, their idea is supposedly that Lucha Underground was a strong concept, but it wasn't done right because, you know, it, it was aimed at the uh, English speaking audience, and this is going to be aimed at the Spanish language television. Uh, supposedly they're looking for pro wrestlers and actors who have some pro wrestling experience. And they want to use experienced wrestlers that are good flyers and workers. And uh, they're looking for folks that have, you know, just experience, especially with acting to do things behind the scenes. So supposedly they're going to pay on skill level and experience. and They're going to pay at least $250 a day plus travel. So again, according to Wrestling Observer Newsletter, filming a pilot in December uh, with the hope of a 28 pickup. And then they're going to run a promotion from there. So what, what do you, what do you think about this? I mean, cause I think when they started this, the con, the idea was probably that Lucha underground was going to be dead, but now all of a sudden it's not dead. So what does this do? Are we just going to get a second Lucha underground? Does this make any sense? Well, when, uh, when I learned about this, I assumed it would kind of be, I don't know, maybe Lucha Underground adjacent. Maybe take some of the ideas and concepts, but do them in a, maybe rejigger them a little bit. Not really sure. I don't know a whole lot about this. But um, it, it, I'm encouraged that they've at least, uh, that they're at least looking at people who, who are probably strong actors as well as strong wrestlers. But on the other side of that coin, it's like, how, how many of those people are actually out there? How many of those people are available that aren't signed to one company or another? Do they, they are there even enough people they can sign that they can put on a, de- a decent show with? See, that's 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 I think where their problem is. I think that they were hoping that Lucha Underground wouldn't continue, and they would say, "Hey, let's go see if we can sign some of the Lucha Underground talent." The part that's scary about that is that a lot of that talent's already signed to AAA anyway, right? And Impact is going to scoop them up and. You know, don't get me wrong. I'm not suggesting that Impact is the most stable company on the planet because God knows it's not. But let's face it, FK9, Lucha Under or, or Arrow Luge, right? With something that they're trying to start versus Anthem with an actual product. You know, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and a yeah. place to air it. This is this is a no brainer if I'm a talent. So I don't I don't know. I don't know. I, what I do like and what really you know, I think should give all of us hope is the fact that we're seeing more options, right? So it's no longer just WWE, uh, TNA, which is what it was at the time, and Ring of Honor. Now you've also got Lucha Underground. You've got this, you know, and you're starting to see some of the, you know, the the, the bigger indie promotions start to do some stuff as well. You know, New Japan's coming into town. They're 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 running shows and whatnot. So. Uh, I think it's probably good for the industry that that people are looking at it and saying, "Hey, we can do this." Uh, at the same point in time, uh, I don't know. I, I don't know. If it has much chance to succeed, especially if they don't have a place to show the show. 
Yeah, I mean, uh, Jeff Jarrett made uh, tons of noise when he was starting up GFW, and he uh, he taped like tons of TV that didn't see uh, and never saw air. I mean, they're only they're only airing it now, and that's after GFW was quote unquote like merged with Impact Wrestling. So he had he basically had to merge with a different company just to get his TV on the air. And uh, I imagine Jeff Jarrett has more connections uh, and is uh, more. Uh, adept at this type of stuff and running Don Harris are. I don't know about Aero Luge, but if Jeff Jarrett couldn't get his show on the air, what chance do these guys have? I mean, this is the type of news that I like to hear. I like hearing about you know, a company starting up instead of closing down uh, because, you know, I like, you know, it's better for the business when there are plenty of, plenty of places to work. So, you know, more opportunities for the wrestlers, that's good. But I'm not terribly optimistic about their chances. I, you know, good luck to them at, at least. Here's a question for you, FK9. Are we sure that uh, Ed Nordholm has the rights to air amped? <laughs> oh, who the hell knows? <laughs> I mean, for all we know, he didn't have the rights to air the show, and they can't do it now either. Well, they didn't, well, they, they didn't have the rights to the name. It didn't stop him from rebranding the company. Uh, I'm just saying. Who knows? Uh, I'm just saying, next thing we know, there's a season to assist. It's like, yeah, no, we got to take it down now. Amp is just done. You know, maybe Jeff Jarrett just gave it away. Maybe he's like, you know, it's never going to see the light of day. You know, who, who, who the heck knows what's going on? But look, we did have a show this week, right? And yeah. the show starts off with everybody's favorite champion, Eli Drake. Right, and he comes out for his opening promo. FK9, what do you make of this promo? Uh, I was really, I was really cracking up when he did his finisher on the jacket. I think the only the only downside <laughs> is that he didn't drop the knee on it to finish it off, because <laughs> I would have marked out for that. Uh, I I, I, I got to tell you, you know, Eli Drake is a is a great promo. There, there's no doubt about this, right? Yeah. So my question is, why the hell is he going out there and trying to be Ric Flair 30 years later? My guess is the writers probably didn't give him much to work with, and he just tried to uh, juice the promo up a little bit on the fly. I thought it was terrible. And, and I'll tell you why. First of all, I think Eli Drake is, is capable of being Eli Drake. At any time. I think he's one of the best promos in the business. I, I, I think my my opinion of him is off the charts, as is pretty much everybody that listens to the show, right? Yeah. But but there's only one Ric Flair, right? And let's face yeah. it, it is kind of cheesy when Ric Flair did it. And we're talking like back 1987 as opposed to 2017. And to me, he looked like he had Arn Anderson's sunglasses on. Okay, like literally the same pair of cheap sunglasses that Arn Anderson wore back in 1987. And he's trying to be Ric Flair. And, you know, it was it was great. Right. When when it was done before. Right. When um, uh, what's his face uh, imitated Ric Flair. Why am I drawing a blank? FK9, help me out. Um, I, I, Jay Lethal. I, thank you. Jay Lethal did it. Because Ric Flair was there watching Jay Lethal do it, and Jay Lethal did a great job. But Jay Lethal still thinks he's Ric Flair in, in his promos in, uh, in Ring of Honor half the time, and he's not. And it was great because Ric Flair was there. And Jay Lethal being Ric Flair in that episode, that's probably my favorite promo that I've ever seen in Impact. Because it was, he was spot on with it, and, and everybody was laughing, including Ric Flair. But Ric Flair has been gone for years. And this just made no sense to me whatsoever. Eli Drake needs to go back to being Eli Drake, and he needs to be doing what he does well. The suits, sorry, they look like they're from 1987. The sunglasses, they look from there like they're 1987. And the promo was also from 1987. I really felt like I was watching an episode of the NWA from 1987. Maybe this is just a case of Eli Drake not being given any direction. And judging by a lot of the stuff that happens in the rest of this show, I think that's a pretty safe bet. Um, I still, I still got a kick out of it for the most part, but uh, yeah, I, I do understand where you're coming from here. 
Oh, he's always entertaining, and I don't want to make it sound like he wasn't entertaining. I, I will grant the man that. What I, what I will tell you is not necessarily entertaining is then we get Chris Adonis and Garza Jr. And now, I think Garza Jr. has like tons of potential, but FK9, I think he also falls into that category of random guy number 35 they brought in the promotion and haven't built up, okay? Yeah. And so I, I, I know there's a lot of Garza Jr. fans out there, and, and I get why. The guy is entertaining, but we need to connect with him before they start messing him at the top of the card, right? So he comes out, he does his, his shtick, and his shtick is funny. Like I said, it's a funny shtick. Let me see you a few times before you put him in this, you know, important part of the card. And then Chris Donis just doesn't belong there at all. Finally, Johnny Impact, who's supposedly not there, but let's face it, folks, this is professional wrestling. The moment you say somebody's not in the back, Wink, wink, nod, nod. They're in the back. So now we have Jim Cornette who comes and he's going to book this match FK9 between Garza Jr. and Johnny Impact. And the winner, okay, is going to main event Bound for Glory. <sighs> Any idea who you think is going to win this one? Oh, gee, let me think for a minute. <sighs> okay. Yeah, there was a... Uh... There were a lot of problems here. This, this just absolutely reeked of the writers just hot shotting all my like literally everything about this. I'm with you about Garza Jr. I like the guy a lot, but you know they brought him in as part of a tag team with Laredo Kid. It was a really good tag team. I thought they were going to do something with that, but they were used as mainly uh, utility players for whatever reason. And then uh, they weren't on the show for a while, and then Laredo Kid just kind of went away. And then we get a video package spotlighting uh, uh, Garza Jr., which was nice. And then suddenly he's he's having a match with uh, Braxton Sutter. So I guess they're going to do something with that. And then that feud kind of gets dropped for some reason. And now all of a sudden he's uh, you know, making the save in a main event segment. for That's like, why, why did he come out? This is so random. And now here he is fighting Chris Adonis. And all of a sudden he has a chance to main event Bound for Glory. It's like, you guys, you haven't built this person up at all. He's he's a he's a future breakout star definitely, but you got to put in the work. You can't just hot shot and wham bam boom. You're going from zero to a hundred uh, just like that. It doesn't work that way. It's way like, it's something I've been something I've been saying on my show for a while. The creative has to put in the work, and they're not doing it. And when you don't do that, something that could be and should be effective just doesn't come off that well. All right, so. Uh, and um, okay, here here another problem. He can't even beat Chris Chris Adonis. He has trouble with Chris Adonis, who management seems to see something in. For what reason, I have no idea. But the audience views this guy as a loser. And if he, he has trouble beating a loser, now all of a sudden, oh, this guy who couldn't even beat Chris Adonis, who couldn't even beat Eli Drake's sidekick, is now having an opportunity to main event Bound for Glory. It it doesn't work, and it sucks because. I like the guy. I think he, they've got a big star on their hands with this guy if they use him right, but they're just not. It's They seem to think that building this guy up is a lot easier than it is, and it's they're, just, they're not putting in the effort here, and it's it's very disappointing. Now, now FK9, you know, you and I, we're not backstage, and they always say there's all kind of stuff that goes on backstage, things that happen that, that we're not aware of that change plans. Is there any chance that Garza Jr. is being inserted into a slot that was originally meant for low-key. Low-key. God. Um, I, I guess it's possible. Uh, more likely, uh, this is like a similar spot to what they had planned for uh, uh, El Patron before he had his problems. Because, um, you know, they, they had that one-on-one -on -one match for the world title scheduled with Patron and Loki, and then Patron had to vacate the title because reasons. And with the way... And Loki still sort of had... Uh, they kind of made it sound like that a uh, Loki's title shot might still happen, but then it didn't. And then they didn't really have anything uh, planned uh, or happening for LAX... Uh, in the world title situation after that. So I don't, I suspect there wasn't anything really planned 
for low key in the world title picture beyond that title match. I could be wrong. Um, but this does kind of feel like they're just hot shotting something because some kind of plans got screwed up. I don't necessarily think it's the low key thing though. Yeah. It, it just, it just strikes me as being very, very, very random. Um, speaking of random, uh, let's talk about our, our favorite tag team, you know, the, the, the tag team champions, yeah. Ohio versus everything. And a name F can, I, I will never get behind that name. I, I just don't, I just do not understand that name. That name reeks independent. It reeks Bush league. I, I don't care how good the Chris's are. If they don't change their name, I, I could never get behind them. Uh, and they got some work to do in that department too. But they defeated two guys, a uh, random tag team, Trey Miguel and John Boland, whoever they are. And um, I, I mean, I guess they got a, the tag champs. They got to go over, but they, they couldn't have given them anybody better. I mean, you mentioned Garza Jr. and Loretta Kidd. Wouldn't this be a better place and a better spot for those two to be in? It would. And I don't really understand why we're not getting it. Um, I, you know, I've said this before, I'll say it again. I mean, OVE just won the tag team titles, which in and of itself was a pretty hot shot at angle, quite frankly. And now we're just putting them in another random squash match. Well, they just, if they're the tag team champions now, shouldn't they be beyond the, uh, squashing random jobbers to get over phase? You'd think so, but, um, I mean, they, they rushed these guys to TV, probably. They rushed them into a feud with the tag team champions. They rushed them to win the tag team titles. And now, and, and, and now what? It feels like there hasn't been any development there. We as fans still don't know anything about, about these guys. Um, I, mean, I was, uh, personally, I was just kind of waiting for the match to end because that was when I figured LAX would show up. I mean, they just, uh, just before this segment, they did that pre-tape from the LAX clubhouse showing that LAX were so pissed off and so incensed about losing the tag titles that they almost came to blows with each other. And then they get, you get the impression that they're about to do something crazy and violent. And then they just don't show up when OVE are in the ring. You know, it's just, it's, it's just very confusing writing. And, uh, again, it's just not a very effective way to get anyone in this situation over. Yeah. I'm with you completely. And, you know, I'm looking at other people that are using the card here and, I mean, honestly, there's absolutely no reason that they could have just thrown in, you know, Matt Seidel and Andrew Everett into that match instead and just made a random tag team for the night and said, hey, these guys are going to go after the tag titles. I mean, they would have made for a much better match, right? OVE would have had the work to get over. They would have had better workers to work with to go over. And instead, I'm just kind of left thinking to myself, okay, the tag team division has never been this bad. Like, ever. I, it's just, I don't know. I do not understand what they're doing with the tag team division. I know they got a couple teams on the shelf, but they're breaking up tag teams and they're bringing in, you know, random jobber one and random jobber two. And they don't even look good in the match because they barely get any offense against a team that's not really over, but are the tag champs. So what I'll tell you is, is that after this, Sienna comes out and addresses the knockouts. And... I thought that Sienna gave one hell of a promo. I thought Sienna knocked it out of the park. I thought that she was entertaining. I thought she was hysterical. She's going to go into the into the Hall of Fame this year, and um, and then we get the match that you know you and I were talking was probably one of the things was going to happen last week, which is the four way at uh, Bound for Glory with Sienna, Taryn, Gail, and Allie. Yeah. Um, I, I did my my review of the show on Saturday night, and I, I went on a pretty lengthy diatribe about this segment. Um, I, I thought Sienna did really well here. Uh, she's always been good on the mic. Some people on some commenters say she's bad on the mic. I, I don't understand that at all. I think her promos are great. Um, I don't think I think her performance was was terrific. I think the problem that I had with it is that all the verbiage that the writers gave her was just very uh, generic and basic uh, for a couple of reasons. Um, and then, you know, one by one, all these different women come out 
and they want title shots. And then they all just be, get granted title shots because. And this is where I have a big problem with this. Uh, because, look, we've known since after Slammiversary that Gail Kim said so she, she's going to retire at the end of the year, but she wants to retire as Knockouts Champion. So they've had several months to write this storyline, to find a compelling way to write Gail Kim's victory lap, essentially. Like the, great, the greatest knockout ever, you know, the, the greatest woman's wrestler alive. They've, they've called her this, you know, I don't know how many times. And it's it's her swan song. Yeah, you know, she's about to walk off into the sunset, but she's she's going for one last shot at the title. There's an interesting story in there that they could have written. I wasn't a big fan of building the, the idea of building a whole knockout division around this, going into Bound for Glory. But like I said, if you're gonna do this, do it right. They have not done this right. And I, you know, they they put out a video on Twitter advertising this match and it's just the four of them in the match just saying uh you know random lines uh and not really talking about the the quote-unquote feud that much because there isn't really a feud here I, I i responded to it i replied it says look it's you know you could be using gail kim's quote-unquote retirement as a, as a big selling point of this match she, she's canadian the show is in canada it's her last championship match, maybe her last match ever. Why are you not playing that up? Why are you not doing more with that? It's almost as if you're willfully ignoring it when playing it up could actually make you money. Because people might show up, might buy a ticket, might order the show to see Gail Kim's last match. And it's almost like they are they just took that and threw it away. Instead, you've got Gail Kim coming out saying, oh, I, I want a title shot. And then here comes Taryn Terrell, and here comes Allie. They all want title shots, and they're getting them. Now it's a fatal four-way. And there's no real personal connection that Gail has with any of these people. The closest thing she has to one is with Taryn Terrell, but that's really stemming mostly from the feud that they had in Taryn's last run, not from anything that they've done recently together. They haven't even had a singles match since Taryn came back. And, you know, they it just feels like they're leaving so much money on the table if they wanted to do this Gail Kim swan song or last match ever, it should have, in my opinion, it should have been like a personal one-on-one -on -one match with some real emotion behind it, some real heat behind it. I don't get the sense that there is any of that here. And I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm, I try to be very humble about this, but honestly, I, I could have written a better angle than this. I don't, I don't understand why they're having a fatal four-way with virtually no story behind it when. If they were gonna, if they were gonna do the Gail Kim is retiring, she's taking one last shot of the title. Man, do it right. They have not done this right at all. Not only that, I mean, if I'm playing fantasy booking here, I'm putting Rosemary in, right? I'm putting her in as champ. I'm having Gail go after, her, and I'm having the entire thing Canadian versus Canadian, okay? Yeah. And and then I'm taking Sienna and Taryn, and Allie, and I'm putting them in a tag team with Taya match. Okay, that's what I'm doing. I'm putting, I'm making the tag team match, the lower match on the card, and then I am putting one-on-one -on -one for, the, for the championship with the number one gal and the number one gal. Okay? Yeah, you could market it as the best knockout today versus the best knockout that's ever. That's right. And, and here's a bigger selling point. They're both Canadian. Also, Gail has never beaten Rosemary. Also, Rosemary was Gail was Rosemary's first official match, and Rosemary beat her. Also, they had a feud that was being teased last year when Gail Kim's chosen successor in Jade was taken out by Rosemary, and Rosemary pumped Gail out a bunch of times. There's a history between these two they could have played up. There's, there's a story there they could have used. If they'd actually thought about it for five minutes, this is just off the top of my head right here. I, 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 this is this is what I'm saying, and and let's face it, it would be a lot more Hogan and Andre the Giant esque of a match, okay? And so you could have you could have put the two of them in there. You could have had a heck of a match. You still could have kept the other four on the card, okay? But instead, we're going to get the one on one match with Rosemary and Taya, which honestly is probably going to be the better match here, okay? And then you're going to have Gail 
who now can go over on anybody. She can go over on Allie. She can go over on anybody, but it doesn't mean anything unless she goes over on CN. But because of two other women involved, you know they're going to be involved in the, the finale somehow, the, the big finish. It, it has to be. And so it's going to mean less. And so if Gail doesn't go over, now Gail's a random spectator in, in a four knockout match. And, and I don't see how Gail doesn't go over here. I, I just I just don't see how on the way out they're not honoring her. But they're not doing a very good job of honoring her, like you said. They, they should be building her up as, as the one that's supposed to come in and win. And then if they decide to shock the world and not have her win, it'll mean something. And if she does win, it'll be like, well, this is what the payoff was for this angle. So I, I don't I don't get the booking here either. And, you know, we can talk about issues in the booking department another thing we can talk about low-key leaving right we can talk about el patron having issues but there's no issues with any of these females there's absolutely no reason why this couldn't be booked in any given way so it is it is it is kind of disappointing uh, i'll tell you what else is disappointing andrew everett has apparently been brainwashed by trevor lee so they're they're back together <laughs> What, explain this to me, FK9. How, how, and it didn't happen on the show, right? It's a YouTube clip where this happened. Uh, I, I don't think it's even a YouTube clip. Oh, jeez. Yeah, this, I, I, I was wondering about this, too. I, I watched the, the show on Thursday night, and Andrew Everett is coming out with Trevor Lee. And I'm saying to myself, what the hell is going on? Weren't these guys feuding? Didn't they hate each other the last time Everett was there? And then Josh Matthews explains it. The only explanation we get, mind you, that Trevor Lee brainwashed Andrew Everett, and that's why they're friends again. Oh, I mean, there you go, Josh. Matt, you said so. Yeah. So, I mean, it's it's, it's you know, works. Yeah, you know, I mean, on a, on a story, on a show that, on, on a show where storylines in general have kind of been minimized and taken a backseat to the wrestling. You would think that when you've got a brainwashing storyline of all things, that's probably something you want to focus on a little bit. I mean, hey, that's that's at least that's 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 something interesting. That's something that could be potentially you could potentially make a, a some kind of angle out of that. Maybe it's I mean it's a little crazy, but hey, I mean I'll take anything at this point. But not only do we not see it, I mean, there's we're we're only learning about it after the fact. There's there's no segment where we get to see how this happened. There's no YouTube video. There's no nothing. It just no. They're they're just friends again because just brainwashing. Because Andrew Everett has nothing else to do. Yeah, and they need to get him on the show because he's too good of a talent to keep him off. <laughs> yeah, there there wasn't even an angle where you brought him back, and it's a big surprise that that they're friends again. Like they could have been having a tag match or or maybe. Uh, Trevor Lee was defending the title and he was losing and then suddenly there's Andrew Everett and you think he's going to screw over Trevor Lee but no, he helps him win the match because oh, holy shit, they're friends again. How did that happen? But no, nothing like that. He just comes out for a six-man tag and they're buddies because brainwashing. Uh, yeah, uh, great writing right there. I mean, Ed Nordholm said that the show was going to be you know, much more <laughs> wrestling-centric than it had been in the past. And look, I have no problem with having longer and better matches on the show but can we do some kind of development can we do some kind of, I don't know, character development? We've talked about that. Can we do some sort of storyline development? This can happen in the ring. There's no reason why you can't develop stories in the ring. Uh, but when you just randomly bring Andrew Everett in and go, look, we need to find a way to get Matt Seidel on TV this week and Andrew Everett on TV this week. So we're going to make a six-man tag. Okay? And, 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 and I'm sorry. You know, we've already got Sanjay and Petey in it. So Andrew you're going to have to be a bad guy because it can't be Matt. Okay. And and, and I know your your partner is your arch nemesis. All righty then. I mean, that's kind of what happened. It's, 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 I don't, I don't mind them making some of these matches as long as they just explain it somehow, FK9. Just explain it anyway, but that way. Yeah. And the, 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 the sad part is that this was the easiest thing in the world to explain with the tiniest bit of effort they could have done this. One little backstage pre-tape before the match. Trevor Lee and Caleb Conley, they're looking for a partner. They're down a man. They've got to face these three guys, and it's just the two of them, so they need a tag team partner. But no one's around. So here comes Andrew Everett. He gets uh, up face-to-face -face with Trevor Lee. He says, look, man, I still hate your guts for what you did to me. Nothing's been resolved there. But I can't pay my rent right now. I haven't been used in months. 
I got to eat. My family needs to eat. So if hell, if I team up with you, if I'm your partner tonight, then at least I'll get my face on TV. At least I'll make some money. So fuck it. Let's do this. That, that's 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 all it would have taken. But no, 30, brainwashing. Brainwashing. That's it. 30, just, th- 30 seconds probably is enough. Yeah. I, that's probably enough, right? We're not, we're not asking for a 10-minute explanation here. We're asking for like 30 seconds. And, and speaking of 30 seconds, and this, this could wind up being the, uh, the one of the high points in the show, at least for me. They had crazy LVN driving her scooter through the crowd. <laughs> Aimlessly. I mean, don't get me wrong, folks. It was entertaining, and, and I really did enjoy it, but it, it had nothing to do with anything else in the show. She has no angle at this point. Okay, because 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 Grado's off running around the country making money for Joseph Park and Park Park and Park, and not himself, and they just have her randomly driving a scooter through the crowd. It was it was great. It was hysterical. It was fun, but but they're putting this in there that does nothing at all for the rest of the show. Yeah, and, and then FK Nine they they went there. Okay, Moose, he, he's 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 got to find Lashley. He knows where Lashley is. Of course he does. He's an American top team in Florida. So, so I'm, out, I'm watching this and I'm, I'm watching Moose. He's, he's going to walk in there and I'm thinking to myself, oh, this is ridiculous. Moose is going to go in there and he's going to beat up Lashley and he's, he's not going to get the crap kicked out of him. I mean, like, this is, this is where they're going with this. They're actually going to have Moose go in there and start beating people up. And I'm thinking, there's like 100 people in there. And that parking lot was pretty full. And they're probably Lashley fans and not Moose fans. Then he goes in there. He proceeds to get the crap kicked out of him by all of them and gets thrown right out. Now, don't get me wrong. Look, folks, you go into an MMA gym, gym and you pick a fight. That's kind of what's going to happen, right? That that's, that's common sense. And it was probably the most common sense that we saw from any of the writing in this episode. <sighs> but they also... <laughs> wasted television time on FK9. Like, he wasn't smart oh. enough to bring backup. I mean, he could have brought Robbie E in. Right? <laughs> Robbie E was still in the crowd and he could have brought in, you know, somebody else, right? I mean, he, they brought the bromance into one of those things one time, right? Didn't the bromance come and help somebody? Go into <laughs> an MMA gym, gym and find Lashley or something? He could have done anything. Okay? But no, he goes in by himself. I, I got nothing for you. Okay, um, let, let's let's backpedal a little bit because I had stu- I need to wait to weigh in on a couple other things here. Uh, first of all, uh, the X Division match. All right, good match, but uh, someone was very someone important was very conspicuous by his absence. You know who that was? Desmond Xavier. You know the the winner of the Super X Cup. The guy who said upon winning that big trophy that he was going after the X Division title and then disappeared. And now here's like now now it looks like there's gonna be like six guys just thrown into some big spot fest at Bound for Glory, probably an ultimate X match, all getting title shots at once. Meanwhile, the winner of the Super X Cup is nowhere to be seen. Explain that to me. Because uh it, the writers sure didn't bother explaining it. Next, the LVN thing. Okay, she's okay. I get it. She's gone insane again. She's on the hunt for a man. She's you know, making out with randos in the crowd because she wants to find a husband. Um, wasn't there a guy just a couple of weeks ago who was trying to beat the shit out of Grado because Grado was trying to marry LVN? Remember Congo Kong? That wasn't he like all uh, obsessed with having LVN for himself? Well, now Grado's out of the picture. Now Laurel looks like she wants to bang any guy with a pulse. Where's Congo Kong now? He could. Why, why doesn't he want LVN now? He could probably get her. Suddenly he just disappears. Very impressive how the writers were able to tie up that dangling little plot thread right there. They just forget that whole Congo Kong thing ever happened? Yeah, okay. <sighs> okay, so the, the moose thing. Um, I, I, I have... <laughs> I, f- I find myself wondering why... We're still following up on Dan Lambert and American Top Team every week after they after Lashley is supposed to have quote unquote left the company. I mean, Jim Cornette hated these guys. He wanted them gone. Now they're gone, but we're still giving them TV time. We're still following up on them. Now we're sending cameras to the American Top Team gym to interview them. This makes no sense. Okay, at least, at the very least, 
they had Moose bring a camera crew with him as he, an actual impact talent, went to the gym. That was the only good thing about this. But yeah, he goes into the MMA gym. He doesn't even touch Lashley. All these MMA thugs kick his ass. I still have no idea who any of these people are. And and the end result is that Moose looks like an idiot because they're still trying to put all this heat on Dan Lambert. Not Bobby Lashley, mind you, but Dan fucking Lambert. The one person in this situation that none of the audience even cares about. <laughs> I hate this angle so much. It is the worst... The worst fucking angle in professional wrestling right now. It's terrible. It's making loose. It's making Moose look bad. It's making me care less about Lashley. Their feud is not even the central focus of this thing. I mean, they've tr- they've made some very very half-assed attempts to tease a Moose Lashley rivalry, but it's none of it has been effective because American Top Team and Dan freaking Lambert have always been standing in front of them, getting all the spotlight that should have been on them the whole time. It's terrible. And this was no different. How, how, are the, how is Moose supposed to get his heat back on Dan Lambert? Is he going to powerbomb Dan Lambert through a flaming table wrapped in barbed wire at Bound for Glory? I highly doubt that. How are they supposed to get all this heat back from Dan Lambert now? I, I don't know. What is the purpose of this? Just to give Jeff Jarrett's buddy TV time? Because it's really hurting the product right now. This angle sucks. Wow. Tell us what you really think. Um, <laughs> I, I, I've been holding that in a little while. I can tell. I can right. tell, man. We, we, we might need to get you some help on that one. Uh, it is bad. I mean, I'm, I'm not going to lie. It, 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 they could do a lot with it, and they're not, right? Uh, this 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 random vignette of him going down to American Top Team, I mean, I think this is just the icing on this, this, this proverbial cake in this case, right? Uh, it's 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 abs- it was absolutely a complete waste of TV time. You know, he probably should have attacked Lashley as Lashley was leaving the gym or done something. You know, anything but walk into the gym. Dan Lambert is taking up the TV time. I think you're absolutely right about that. Uh, be interesting to find out if Jeff Jarrett wasn't supposed to have been involved in more of this stuff <clears throat> and then maybe was cut out or what. I don't I don't see how he would have been involved in this week for sure. Right. So probably not too much more. I like the fact that they're trying to build up Moose. I think Moose is a guy that really, he's not quite EC3 or Eli Drake, but I think that he's a guy that has the potential to be one of those players at the top of the card for a long time. Uh, so I like the fact that they're, that they're trying to build him up. At the same point in time, as you said, this is not the way to do it. Uh, they need to actually have him be able to get one up on Lashley at some point. Because when he does go to Bound for Glory, when he does beat Lashley for that very first time, we have to believe he actually can do it. And usually the heel gets the upper hand on the face and keeps getting the upper hand on the face. But, you know, at some point in time, you know, right before they're going to go to the payoff, the, the, the face does something to get one up on the heel just to make it seem believable. So we'll see if they have something in store for Moose and Lashley after this. I, I'm hoping that they do. I, I, I think if this was just the, you know, maybe the calm before that storm at the same point in time, it was a terrible calm before the storm. It was terrible. Uh, I also like what you said, honestly, going back to, uh, you know, Laurel Van Ness driving the scooter through the crowd. You know, where is Congo Kong? We haven't seen Congo Kong in a while and we haven't seen it with LVN in a while. And so they really haven't done a very good job, to be honest with the FK9, at really establishing what that relationship is. You know, she was sort of his valet. She sort of she sort of brought him in to, you know, to, to, to help her out, you know, uh, you know back in the day, but they never really established what that relationship is other than it seems as though he has, you know, some sort of a romantic interest in her. Right. So there's, there's really nothing going on there either. Now this, this leads us all into the main event and we get the triple a versus, you know, impact feud kickoff. So I know you're not real hot on how they're handling the American top team feud. What do you think about how they're handling triple a versus impact? I'm not a fan. I thought they took a step in the right direction last week when they had uh, a a promo segment with James Storm trying to uh, explain some of the things that have been going on with this AAA angle. They kind of addressed the stuff with him in EC3. And, um, you know, it's James Storm. He's gold on the mic. So you give James Storm a microphone, 
he's not going to deliver something bad. You, it's always going to be better than what had come before. But so I, I thought that was that was an improvement over what they'd been doing. I thought, okay, maybe they figured this out finally. But then we just get, you know, another random tag match. To their credit, you have James Storm and EC3 having tension between them. They're not instantly BFFs. That's that's good. Thank you. But uh, there's there's a definite lack of creativity on display here. When Pagano didn't come out with the other two, you kind of knew what was going to happen. You figured he's just going to cause some interference and the faces are going to lose again. I guess the only the only thing that approached being surprising is that Eddie Edwards didn't get involved, I guess because he's going to get involved next week. So, yeah, predictably, Pagano causes some, an interference and takes out EC3 and the faces, the faces win because AAA is AAA. And we got to make AAA look better than our own talent because I'm, I'm not sure. I'm... <laughs> <laughs> I'm really not sure. Uh, so, I mean, the match was good, but the storytelling from the writers here is just, they, they, they continue to drop the ball on so many things, and this, this was no exception. You know, when they, I guess when this feud started, I guess I didn't realize that there was even a feud building here. Uh, was it uh, was it Texano that came out? Wh- which one of them came out and cha- and randomly challenged for the uh, grand championship? It was one of the two of them. I think it was Phantasma. It was Phantasma. All right, so we'll go with Phantasma. I, I'm, I'm going to buy what you're selling on this. And then they kind of randomly started getting the other guys involved. But it really didn't feel like they were generating any heat. And I still don't feel like they've generated any heat with this. I mean, they wrestle, they have a rivalry, but it kind of reminds me of my daughter's, you know, soccer team. You know, they got a cross county rival that they that they play, and you know, they all talk on the field, you know, and 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 have fun. They're not ready to kill each other because you know they're little girls playing soccer. That's kind of how that works. This just doesn't feel like. Like I don't, I, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I obviously Texano and Phantasma, you know, they're they're winning because they're getting Pagano in there, and they're getting a little bit of interference every now and again. But they don't really feel like they're necessarily heavy heels, and they're getting that real heel heat for it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it, it's, it's, it's very ran, it's very random. Yeah, and so they're not generating any heat, and it doesn't feel like EC3 and Storm are really generating a whole lot of face heat either. The one positive that comes out of this is that we're not getting grand title offenses because those things are boring as hell. I'm sorry. I, I just I just can't wait until they ditch that title. And, and I know that, you know, that they're talking about, um, you know, keeping the rules and whatnot. And it looks like it's going to it's going to stick around for a while. But to me, the only positive in here is that I don't get that stupid round system to, to deal with every week because it just feels random. And so, you know, you talked about. American top team versus impact being the worst angle in, in wrestling. And, and, you know, can I, maybe it is, but this one feels like it's right up there because it's just not, they're not doing anything with it. They may be really screwing up the American top team angle, but I, I don't feel like there's any kind of rivalry between triple a and an impact here. You know, I, I, I just, and then they may have ended it. I, I'm looking back at the rest of the card. I'm trying to figure out what would be the main event. But this is this this just doesn't feel like a main event for an impact, does it? No, it really doesn't. And um, it, I've I've really been struggling with the the whole AAA angle in general. And just the story tell the quality of the storytelling has just been poor from start to finish with this thing. And I wonder. I mean, they made they seemed like so happy and excited about this partnership with AAA and all the the positives that was going to bring to the company. And I, I, I kind of there was a moment a couple of weeks ago when they had Eli Drake defending the title in AAA, where I kind of sort of got what the what they were going for with this partnership, but I don't think they've ever really uh, nailed down the execution of it. And like somebody, maybe I guess somebody has a vision, but 
the translation to the screen is just not coming across. Like we know, okay, all of a sudden there are just AAA guys showing up on Impact, but we don't know why they're there. We don't know what the purpose of any of them is. We don't know why these guys from Pro, Pro Wrestling Noah are showing up. Maybe if they had some kind of press conference and we saw clips of it on the show uh, uh, announcing this partnership and what exactly this partnership was going to mean. And <clears throat> uh, But we didn't really get that. Instead, oh, it's just a bunch of AAA guys show up because, oh, we, we partnered with AAA. All right, well, it would have been nice if, you, if you'd explain that, but they didn't explain it. They don't explain a lot of things. And so suddenly we have AAA talent showing up for, for what reason we don't know. It doesn't seem like the writers even know. They just put them in random situations and expect people to care. And now, at least finally, they're doing some kind of feud. But again, it's just not very well explained or defined. Just they're attacking EC3 and James Storm because AAA is better. All right, well, if you love AAA so much, why don't you go wrestle for AAA then? What are you doing over here? You know, it's just the feud is not well. It's, it's a story, but it's not well crafted. And it's it's a criticism I'm I'm finding applies to a lot of the stuff on this show right now that the writers just don't seem to understand how to craft a well told story and it's really hurting the product. Let me ask you a question: If 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 Josh Matthews and Jeremy Borash and if they weren't out there saying it was AAA versus Impact, would you even know? No. I mean, because I, I, I have no idea. I wouldn't have been able to figure it out. I would just think that these are two random guys that are coming in. I mean, you know, you know, I, I feel like wrestling in general, FK9 should stay apolitical. I think most forms of entertainment probably should. But here you have a great opportunity to to to, to tell a story. And if you tell the story and you stay out of the story, right? So Impact as a company has no opinion whatsoever. You could really do something with Mexico versus the U.S. I mean, you could do something that people could relate to. And you could just let the characters tell the story so everybody saw both sides and you wouldn't have to get in the politics of it. But you would generate heat, right? And, yeah. and I, feel like, I feel like they're – they're, they're not doing anything to generate heat. And if they don't want to go there at all because they're afraid of backlash from this group or that group, like I can't blame them. But, but, but do something to generate heat. The only thing that we got was EC was uh, James Storm making a, a Taco Bell comment, right? I mean, <laughs> that was like the, the, the closest that we got to anything. And, 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 and at that, that was a, a funny thing that, that probably everybody just laughed off and, 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 and that was the end of it. And the other thing is, is that I, I want to see the EC3 of old. I want to see the undefeated EC3 come back. I want to see the cocky, arrogant, rich prick come back. Because I feel like he's dialing it in at this point. I, I feel like this entire feud, the only reason it's even as good as it is, and it isn't good, is because of James Storm. I feel like Texano and Phantasma are there, and and they're like, we have no idea what to do, right? I feel like like EC3 is just sort of like another body because they got to give a, a top end body to this feud from you know from Impact, and James Storm's run around trying to carry the thing with no direction, yeah. and it's not working. It's not working at all. It's not. I um you know the the James Storm promo from I think two weeks ago. That was really the only time in this whole feud when it kind of seemed like they knew what it was about. Okay, it, it's it's not very well explained, but it, I guess they're going for some type of USA versus Mexico angle. All, all right, it's it, there's nothing new about that, but you should be able to get it over if you try, at least. But now they're not really focusing on that anymore. It's just uh, we, we we hate these AAA guys because of some reason that we're not really shown or told because it doesn't seem like the writers even know why they're feuding either. Hey, you know what the funny thing is? Funny thing is, this yeah, angle yeah. that they just promoted as their one of their top angles in the main event, USA versus Mexico, this is going to be one of the big angles for a pay-per-view in Canada. <laughs> this is a good point. It's like, this, is a, I would, this is a great point. That's a really good point. Why are you doing this for a show in Canada? <laughs> Let me ask you a question. You know, 
you referenced the one promo where James Storm kind of defined everything, and I'm pretty sure that was a Taco Bell promo, right? Yeah. Imagine if instead of shooting that in the impact zone, imagine if if he would have said that down at AAA. Imagine if he would have given that very same promo at AAA, the heat it would have generated from the crowd, and now all of a sudden people up here would be more into it too. Same promo, <clears throat> different crowd. Oh, they would have they would have lynch mobbed him. Absolutely. And that's what professional wrestlers are supposed to try to get done. Yeah, it would have been nuclear heat if he'd done it down there. And uh, the triple A guys would have like come out as, as been treated like heroes. Absolutely. And then you know what? Because they mistreated our guy, we would want to mistreat their guy. Yeah. And it I would mean, have actually made some semblance of sense all of a sudden. And all of a sudden, this match would mean something that it just didn't mean. And it could give the same damn promo. He doesn't have to say a single word different. Just do it in a different location. And then, oh, by the way, i, I got to keep him safe on his way out of town, right? Because it would generate nuclear heat. But that's like how it was back in the day. You know, l- listen to Cornette. You know, he's, he's, he's definitely a, a corny guy, but he's given some really interesting interviews talking about the heat that he generated back in the day and people coming after him. That's what you want. Same promo. But God forbid he did it down in Mexico. And oh, by the way, when James Storm goes to Mexico, he's a moneymaker from there on out. And so is EC3. And it's it's all because he gives a promo down there instead of up here. And and I mean, they filmed other footage down there. AAA would make a fortune off of it down there. Same thing. Yeah. Same damn promo. The the idea is is that they're not generating any generating any heat for this whatsoever, and they're really not even trying. So, if I'm AAA, you know I want to make money, and they need to to generate more heat for me to make money to want to continue doing this. And if I'm Impact, it's the same thing. I, I got to make money. So I think that there's a lot to be said about this alliance with AAA, but they can't treat it the way that Ring of Honor treats New Japan. Right. And they just they just grab some New Japan wrestler and he shows up and he's in the six man tag main event for the title this week just because he's from New Japan. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Build it up and do something right with it. I don't know. I don't know. You yeah. got anything else on this one? I don't know. It, it it really makes me wonder what they're trying to get out of with this whole partnership. Uh from my vantage point, it kind of seems like they thought the partnership itself was all they needed, but they didn't really figure out or hash out what exactly they were supposed to do with it. Okay, now we've got this talent exchange, but the talent is not being used in an effective way. I mean, you just just now figured out a way that they could have improved this angle enormously by just just thinking about it a little bit. And maybe changing up the logistics a little bit. Maybe sending somebody, uh, one of our people over there to do a thing. Not even a different thing. Just the same thing he did on our show, just in a different place. And it would have made things, it probably would have improved this angle a lot. But it's just little details like that that these people just aren't thinking about. And maybe it's a case of not really communicating well with the other company. Or maybe it's just a case of our writers being, frankly, kind of lazy. But something is just not coming across. And... You know, there's a lot of things that they that could be done to make this partnership a prosperous relationship for, for both companies. But for one reason or another, these things are just not happening. And I'm not sure why. And, and I'll tell you one other thing that they could do that would make Bound for Glory, you know, a whole lot more interesting. And that would be to include Eddie Edwards in the main event. Now you'd have the Impact Champion, the Triple A Champion, and the NOAA Champ. Interesting. And they could all come out with their belts. And, you know, and, and, and believe it or not, they're all impact talent as well, which is cool as well. Now they, they could literally promote that. And, you know, all the folks down in AAA, all the folks out in NOAA, I mean, you, you, look, Pro Wrestling NOAA, they're doing their annual um, uh, thing where they're bringing everybody in. Right. So they're bringing in folks from impact and AAA and NOAA and from around the world. You include one more guy. He's been your former champion. I mean, this is an impact champion in Eddie Edwards. And now you include the Noah champ as well. I mean, the shit isn't hard to fix, FK9. It really isn't that hard to fix, but it's definitely broken. Yeah. So, I got nothing else. You got anything else tonight? 
Nah, I said my piece. Yeah, I think I did too. Let, let's just let's just hope for a, a better build bound for glory than what we've got. It's still, you know, just under a month away. Uh, there is definitely time to improve things, and let's just hope that this was just sort of that that single night where they just really didn't have a good match on the card. Uh, I did, uh, I guess the exhibition match was pretty good, but that oh, was. Wait, wait, hold on. We got uh-oh. one segment here. Uh-oh. Because uh, the, the AAA angle was actually not the end of the show. What they ended the show on was uh, the second pre-tape from the LAX clubhouse where Low-Key decides that they should have a street fight. Yes, they did. Continued. Because them saying that they want a street fight is a big enough cliffhanger to end the show on for some reason. I'm not sure why. There's, a, there's nothing new about street fights. We see those all the time. But now all of a sudden we're supposed to be like terrified or, or or the anticipation is supposed to be through the roof because oh my god street fight well, what's so special about this i don't get it it was well, a very confusing note to end on well they're, they're getting a rematch for the uh the, the the title against ove right but this isn't any street fight fk9 this is 5150 street fight and i mean and it's probably gonna happen at bound for glory probably i mean that'd be my guess maybe they okay, get it beforehand but i Here's my question, though. What's the difference between a street fight and a 5150 street fight? I mean, it's 5150. It's not 5050, it's 5150. I mean, you know, I mean, it's, it's special because it's 5150. I mean, they said so, right? Uh, man, I mean, they've loved to do this stuff for years where they just, they just attach weird names onto gimmick matches and that's supposed to make it different somehow, but it's it, it's not. It's It's... Calling it 5150 doesn't change anything. It's just a regular street fight, which we've had no shortage of in recent times. So what's special about this? I, I don't I don't know. I, I think maybe if it shows up that it's a street fight on a pole match, we'll know Vince Russo's back. <laughs> I mean, you know, <laughs> maybe, maybe that's it. Uh, maybe it's a street, maybe it's a lingerie street fight match. I don't know. Who would I have, be lingerie though? I I, I I hope none of them actually, you know, I, I don't know. I have, I have no idea what a 5150 <laughs> street fight is. I'm, I'm, I, 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 I'm, I'm stretching pretty hard here. FK. I don't even realize that or not, but this is, this is, this is a tough one. All, other than to say that when, uh, when Conan comes out and says it's 5150, he means, he means some serious business there. You know, I mean, I do like the music that they have in those promo segments. I think that they're pretty cool. Yeah, you know what I mean? Just- they're well shot. I, I like the way those things come off. They're you know the, the performers act well. They're it's well shot. It looks pretty. The production end is, has been killing it lately. It's just the writing doesn't really support it. Yeah, and like you said, why they made that the cliffhanger, and and I just I just assume it's going to be a bound for glory. I, I can't imagine they're going to get their title shots back because if they win the belts back, you know, God knows OVE's not over. So who are they going to wrestle at Bound for Glory? Are they going to wrestle Trey Miguel and John Boland? Uh, who's, who's, who's LAX going to go against? I don't know. They could bring back Dewey Barnes and Nor Furnham. They would be. They would. That would be cool. I. Uh, you know. I. I'd be all right with that. Yeah. I like those two. I mean, as long as they don't win, that that could be a problem if they actually won. I don't know. I got nothing else for you. I didn't have anything else for you about that one either. To be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so any, any any last wrap up comments about this this wonderful show? It's I think it's safe to say neither one of us has given this show many stars. How many stars would you give this show? Uh, geez, I don't know. Um, it maybe um, it maybe a three maybe three stars for the wrestling and. Uh, can you give less than one star for the writing? I, I think you probably make it a two-star maybe show. Star for the writing, you know. I, I, I'm, I'm thinking just, I'm thinking just, just, just two stars overall. I mean, you know, you did, you did get Eli Drake, and he was entertaining. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, you did get, you did get the, the knockout segment, which was pretty good. And, and let's face it, like you said, some of the wrestling was was pretty good. The exhibition match was pretty good, and and honestly, the the main event match itself really wasn't a bad match. It, it was just you're just really not paying the same amount of attention because you just don't give a crap about it. Yeah, I, I, I feel bad criticizing it. I do, because the wrestlers themselves are doing a good job. It's just they don't have 
very good material to work with, and that's not their fault. Yeah, it was it was pointless. And and anytime you have a pointless match out there, it, it's sort of like and I hate to be negative on it, but it's kind of like watching Ring of Honor sometimes. And, and I've watched Ring of Honor for years. You know this. I, 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 I say I watch it every week, but I think my DVR thinks it's the same show every week because they do such a bad job at making it look like it's a different one. So it doesn't always tape. And I'm like, what the hell? I didn't get Ring of Honor this week. So finally, I'm going to I'm going to find out next week if that's all it was. I said, just tape reruns because I know there are no reruns. Uh, and by default, of course, once it's been taped once, it doesn't retape the same episode. But uh, it's kind of, it's been kind of like it's been kind of like watching Ring of Honor, where it's just a pointless match and pointless match, and they throw three random guys in the ring, and you already know who's going to win. Whatever. Yeah. So I guess if Ring of Honor is what you're aspiring to be, that's what you're going to be. But uh, uh, but at any rate, so 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 I'm good for the evening. Any final final parting words for the listeners? Um, we taped this show instead of waiting for the last Jedi trailer. So you're welcome. And there you have it. <laughs> <laughs> so folks, on behalf of the entire heel cast, and especially my good buddy FK9 for joining us two weeks in a row and also doing the cool graphic intro that we now have on the show. That, that kicks some serious butt there, FK9. Thank you for that. Um, uh, and a special thanks to, uh, to Kyle, who's going to be doing the editing for us this week. He was supposed to be on the show, but due to a power outage, he was, uh, unable to make it at the last minute. So thank you very much for helping out Kyle. And we hope to get you on next week. Um, I'm impact dude saying everybody have a great night and a great week and we'll see you next time. <laughs>